It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show as we talk relationships. And this one doesn't speak to your partner, it speaks to us. It speaks to our own personal journey and how we approach problem solving, problem resolving. How do you react when you have a disagreement with your partner? We want honesty now to yourself. Do you hold up a guard? Do you allow yourself to be vulnerable and maybe share your true feelings? Are you caught somewhere in between? Well, in modern society, it's not always easy to allow ourselves to share our true thoughts, our beliefs, our values with our partners, even the people we should be closest to, but it is needed in order to build a stronger connection. Let's leave that to our big soleil, choose soft panel to discuss. And joining us to do just that, psychologist Kavashni Governor, Good Hope FM presenter and founder of Vitamin U and good friend of the show, Tamara Snow, and, of course, our very own Zozo. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I would say this is a safe place, but vulnerability doesn't speak to a safe place. Vulnerability speaks to something else, and it's a difficult thing to volunteer that in a relationship when it gets real very, very quickly. Kavashni, maybe I can start with you. Sure. From, from a professional standpoint when i say the word vulnerability does it make you nervous does it make you excited in your practice how do you broach vulnerability what does it mean yeah i think vulnerability brings up lots of scary feelings for people yeah however it's necessary we we can't get around it um everybody's invulnerable every single one of us um and so it's a necessary necessary part of the relationship uh, we need it in notion, we get it tomorrow. We understand that we've mm. got to be there. But when we're caught in the cold face of life and dealing with relationships, the people we love the most affect us the most. They knock us the most. That's often the way it works. Do you employ vulnerability as a tool or is it a state of being in your relationship? How does vulnerability play out? Because you don't mm. seem vulnerable at all to anything. You're a powerhouse, <laughs> powerful woman. Is I it like that? that. Everywhere. Listen, Auntie, I have to be honest, I would love to say that it is a state of being. That's something that I'm working towards. For me, it's a tool right now. I think growing up, I was almost, I've got the belief system that I need to be strong, you know, and especially with the people closest to me, I need to be able to carry the burdens and just forge ahead. And so for me, vulnerability is a tool that I need to keep reminding myself to use. I think the danger there, and you start confusing sacrifice yeah. with love within that space, certainly from my own understanding of that. You know, that vulnerability speaks to a two-way flow. You've taken a long time to get to this point of being comfortable with your own vulnerability. I know this from our own kind of personal journey. Are you comfortable with that now? Definitely. I think, <clears throat> you know, when you look at partners, you, you are drawn to people being vulnerable, yet it's the last thing we end up doing sometimes ourselves. For sure, I like that. Yeah. But I think for us, it's just being able to create that safe haven between us to allow the person to be vulnerable in a safe space. You don't want to use your partner's vulnerability or moments of vulnerability against them. I think that will hurt the relationship, but it's all about creating that safe space where you can be vulnerable with your partner and feel 100% safe. Um, the, and it's a great thing when you can get there. I find in my own relationship, we'll only get there after the fight, unfortunately. Mm. Once we both set our peace, mm. been able to get that off our chest, and then suddenly we realize, wow, why have we been sitting with this nonsense for as long as we have? Then we're vulnerable with each other. Mm. How do we prevent going through that mad cycle? Because it's not just you. I'm not in control of my partner, yeah. and she's not in control of me. Yeah. How do we ourselves take ownership of that kind of vulnerability process? We can't always wait for our partner to create a safe yeah, place. Yeah, you're talking about those fights and those fights are so important because those yeah, fights often, right? yeah, um, we need to think about, well, why aren't we fighting if you're not fighting in a relationship? Fighting in a relationship can be really healthy. Dynamic tension, you it need it. It can be yeah. healthy and it can be an opportunity to bring things to the surface which you wouldn't ordinarily do. Um, but, but you're saying something important. You're saying, well, does it have to become that explosive? Uh -huh. um, and that is if we make ourselves vulnerable in, in small intentional ways, um, and then it prevents this big explosion, um, which is, in, in actual case, you know, making yourself very vulnerable, saying what you really want to say, 
what you really feel, what you really think. Uh, and it can be difficult because you're waiting for your partner to get out of the way, but very often it's ourselves that are standing in the way of that because we don't want to broach those difficult things. We don't want to have to come to terms with those vulnerabilities. But the joy is within a relationship, you get to work on it together. But you've got to bring something to the table. Don't expect your partner to just create that space for you. How do you get there yourself? So I'm going to put it to you guys right now. Do you believe in being vulnerable in a relationship, i.e. have you got a working model that has helped you get to that point? Let us know on our social media pages and then please don't go anywhere. We're going to continue this very important conversation, I think, in just a moment. Stick around.